Welcome to Astranti's SCS Industry Pack. The focus of the case study is on the soft drinks industry, so that is what we'll be taking a look at today. So what is the point of this document? Well, it's pretty simple really. The aim is to get you as many marks in the exam as possible. And we will achieve this by giving you an overview of the whole soft drinks industry, as this is what the examiners are looking for. The examiners expect you to have an excellent understanding of the industry and they want you to demonstrate an understanding of the issues affecting soft drink manufacturers today and be able to apply this knowledge in the exam. Now a little disclaimer before we start. This video will not cover every single point in the document as the video intends just to pick out a few key themes and topics. So please do take the time to read through the document as a, there's a lot of good stuff in there. So let's begin with an introduction to soft drinks and a brief look at the history. So as you can see, the industry has been around for centuries and dates back to roughly the 16th century. And this is where we see the beginnings of what we would consider to be a soft drink. The first lemonade, for example, was a mixture of lemon juice, water and artificial or natural sweeteners. But this was a still version of the drink that we are so accustomed to today. In the 18th century, we finally get the invention of the fizzy drink, thanks to an Englishman named Joseph Priestley, who found that fixed air could be put inside of liquid to create a fizzy drink and that's why he has been named father of the soft drinks industry. From here on developments were fairly rapid although although fizzy drinks or a carbonated soft drink a CSD as they should be referred to started off being marketed as healthy drinks with medicinal benefits it wasn't long before they were consumed for their flavour more than anything. Ginger and lemon flavoured CSDs were popular throughout the 19th century. As was another flavour which combined cocaine from the coca leaf and caffeine rich extracts from the cola nut which resulted in the most iconic flavour ever created and that was coca cola. The next section walks you through the history of arguably, arguably the biggest success story in the soft drinks industry, the Coca-Cola company. The key thing to take away from all of this is the focus on marketing throughout the history of the company. From the very beginning, Coca-Cola focused, focused on using its brand everywhere and used every major event to advertise its product, be it war or the Olympics. So, we know that the industry has been around for centuries, but where is it heading? Well, the general consensus is that the market is mature and growth has stopped. Now, we must be careful when we make this claim, as we know that the soft drink industry is vast and includes everything from your CSDs, so your Cokes and your Sprites to your water and ready to drink coffees. So when we speak of this decline in sales and popularity, we are generally referring to the CSD market, as this is where the major decline is. Other parts of the soft drink industry and market are actually showing increases in popularity. So what has caused this decline in the popularity of CSDs. Fundamentally, it's down to a rise in this healthy lifestyle trend. People across the globe are now much more health conscious. Some of the best selling books at the moment focus on healthy eating and healthy recipes. And everyone's social media feeds are full of pictures of people going to the gym or eating kale and avocado. Sugary drinks just don't fit into this image anymore. In this diagram here, you can see the declining consumption of soft drinks in the US, 
which has historically been the biggest consumer of CSDs. The other diagram shows the how the demand for major CSDs has declined in 2015. Sprite is the only big brand that has actually increased in popularity. Now, if we apply this to Fizz, we can see one particular issue, and that is that the most popular products of Fizz are its carbonated products, such as fruit. And as we all know, the market for them is declining. Now, it's not all doom and gloom for Fizz. The case study tells us there are, that there are a number of other products that Fizz produces in other markets. And there are also sugary free versions of the likes of fruit. Its products such as Clan Spring Water and its juices will likely increase in popularity as CSDs decline because consumers are looking for healthy alternatives. Even better news for Fizz is that Quench derived 45% of its revenues from Cola, which is a CSD. And this will mean that their profits will likely significantly fall if the trend continues in Nortland. So Fizz should prepare to take advantage of the weakness if it occurs. Following on from this, let's take a look at the next section, which is on customers and marketing. Just briefly, let's consider who exactly the customers of the soft drink industry are. As I would argue, it's probably pretty much everyone. How many people do you know that have not tried at least once Coca-Cola or Pepsi, let alone Fanta or Sprite? And then we, when we consider that juices, cordials and water are also soft drinks, it really doesn't leave that many people that aren't customers of soft drinks. Now that's cleared up, let's go back to what we were talking about before, which is these changing trends and demands. As mentioned before, people now are more health conscious than ever. And this has been reflected in the consumption of healthier alternatives, as you can see in both water consumption and juice drink consumption, there is a trend of positivity. And this has correlated with the decline in CSD consumption across the globe. So how can we use this knowledge in the case study? Well, Fizz will need to monitor these trends so that their production can keep up with consumer demands. Although we aren't told in the pre-scene how much of each product is produced, I'm sure that Fizz focus primarily on CSDs, seeing as fruit is their number one seller. But this just is not in keeping with the healthy trend. In order, to fizz, in order for Fizz to keep their brand relevant, they must continue to produce and market their healthy options such as water and cordials and all the other soft drink types. As a popular and established brand in Nortland, they have a good chance of attracting customers, but they must be able to embrace this trend wholeheartedly. Now, as alluded to before, marketing will be very important due to the massive competition in the soft drink market. So let's take a look at who has done this well, and hopefully you can apply these techniques to Fizz in the exam. The example I have chosen is Red Bull. Now, hopefully just that name will conjure an image of skydivers and race cars and all other kinds of adrenaline charged activities. But how have they done this? How have they become so deeply associated with extreme sports? Well, what Red Bull did really well was identified exactly what kind of person that they wanted to appeal to, which was, in this case, young men. Particularly, young men who wanted to take risks and wanted an adrenaline rush. Once they'd chosen their target market, 
they did everything they could to align themselves with what appealed to that type of customer. They created and sponsored their own events, they sponsored athletes and teams across the globe, as you can see from this list here. Almost any dangerous sport you can think of would have been sponsored by Red Bull. And this commitment to alternative sports, so staying away from the likes of football, cricket and tennis, has built them a loyal fan base and Red Bull are seen to share the same passions as their customers and this has made them so successful. However, being so specific as Red Bull has been can leave the door open to competitors. One company that are looking to rival Red Bull is Carabao, another energy drink originating in Thailand but looking to compete in the European markets as well. They believe that the likes of Red Bull and Monster are leaving large numbers of consumers who don't feel as though they are being catered to by these energy drink manufacturers. So older drinkers and female drinkers are just being ignored. In order to reach these consumers, Carabao have decided to make their products slightly more sophisticated by adding and creating new grown-up flavours which should appeal to these consumers. Now there's another company that are taking on a soft drink superpower and that is Karma Cola whose strategy is something that I would refer to as a strategy of differentiation. So it's about marketing what is different about your product and why it's better than others. So what Karma Cola have done is to highlight the unethical treatment of workers and communities by the likes of their rival Coca-Cola and by making sure the public know that they are different and they will look after their employees. The main selling points of their cola is the fact that its ingredients are fair trade and organic. So they ensure that their impoverished cola nut farmers are well looked after. And this is something that cola just don't do. By doing this, they're appealing to that consumer that is happy to pay more when they know where their ingredients come from, how they're sourced, and are also concerned with living healthy. So they're hitting quite a few trends on the head with this marketing strategy. So now let's apply this to the pre-scene. The main thing we can learn from these examples is the success that can be had when you choose to target a particular kind of consumer and when you are seen to align your values with those of the consumer so if we think of Red Bull and then sponsoring all these extreme sports that they know that their customers will love and the same kind of thing with Karma Cola in the way that they want to look after their producers and customers and consumers will really latch on to these different the, the, these differences but since all, in order to do this you need to be able to market your product well so if Fizz were to do or to implement these strategies they could look to target customers that Quench seem to have ignored maybe they ignore older customers or other categories and Fizz should really look to target them with their own products following Karma Cola's approach Fizz could also look to tackle ethical issues surrounding industries or markets that their products are in. Could they come up with a version of a Coda product that is like Karma Cola and is more ethical? And would this damage the monopoly that Quench holds over the Cola market? These are all questions that you, could, you should consider in the case study. 
Astranti case study courses include a wide variety of learning materials that have been expertly crafted to ensure that you have the best possible opportunity of passing your exams. The study text comes in two parts. The first covers every aspect of the exam from every possible angle and teaches you exactly how you can prepare for it. We go into great depth on the pre-scene analysis, how to manage your time and precisely what the exam will involve. The second part is a condensed, manageable textbook covering all the key theories and models you must know in order to pass the exam. We also provide course videos in which SEMA tutor and case study exam expert Nick Best gives you advice and tips on all the key areas of the exam using his many years of experience to give you precise instructions on what you need to do to pass this paper. The pre-scene analysis is a paragraph by paragraph video guide to the pre-scene picking up all the key issues from examining how they relate to the company in question and what you need to do with that information. Accompanying the pre-scene analysis is the industry analysis, which compares the fictional company to a similar real-life organisation, giving you all the necessary information regarding the industry, ensuring you meet the expectations of the examiner. The industry analysis also includes both a written document and a three-part video series. By joining our case study course, you will have access to five full mock exams which will be marked by a qualified and experienced team of markers. We pride ourselves in providing industry leading levels of feedback on your mock exams using our unique marking checklist. You will see each mock exam marked on the same checklist so you can compare each mock and see in which areas you continue to fall behind enabling you to clarify where and how you need to improve. Our masterclasses are live, all-day exam-focused events that are hosted online and are recorded for students that cannot attend live. Masterclass 1 focuses on the keys to passing the case study exam and takes you through topics such as what the examiner says you must do to pass, skills of effective planning and the 10 models most likely to be examined on the current pre-scene. Masterclass 2 is the revision masterclass and focuses on subjects like what the examiner is saying are students key mistakes, identifying your key areas for improvement to score more marks on the exam day and much more. If you complete the full course and still don't pass the real exam you can continue with us onto the next course at no additional charge. We're very confident that people who complete the whole course will pass. But as long as you continue to complete subsequent courses, you can also continue at no additional charge, ensuring this is the last fee you'll ever have to pay for passing your exam.